<clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is your girl Adar, and you're listening to the Digital Sisterhood podcast. This episode is a little bit of a special one. It's also a little bit of a sad one because it is our last and final episode of the season. But I'm not closing the season by myself, y'all. This episode, I got everyone, or well, almost everyone, from the TDS squad here with me. Can I uh, hear you guys? What do you guys Every time I'm editing. Oh my god, this is so interesting because this time I have Mona in front of me. Yo, in the school, if we could see each other's eyes, it's so disorienting. It's so interesting. And for a, for a while, when we met each other, we just could not believe yeah. that we saw each other. Um, but just to go on, Simba's also here. Shout out Hello. to Simba. Hi. Hi, everyone. This is my first time on the Digital Sisterhood podcast. Ooh. You will know me as Simba. Where the keys to my bimba. <laughs> Not until I get my license, then I can fully say that. Inshallah. But I'm happy to be here. Oh, my God. And if, for those who don't know who Simma is, Simma does our cover art. Not only that for the episodes, but she also came up with the logo of the Digital Stir pod. Like, Digital Stir in general. Don't like forget our, our merch. On our merch. Simba does everything. Everything. Um, she's kind of a, like a silent TDS member. You see her work. But I'm so excited because this time we get to hear Simba's voice. Been there since day one. Since day one. No, I'm a supporter. Um, supporter. Uh, uh-uh, you're more a supporter. You're the backbone. She's the number one. Number supporter. one. Exactly. She's she's the day one character. supporter of the Digital Sisterhood. There By the go. way, if you want the merch, go to digitalsisterhood.com. Oh, you started with the merch already. <laughs> it would be some if she wasn't giving a shout out to the merch. No, I'd be promoting the tote bag every day at school. It's my job. <laughs> Just gotta let everybody at my school know. What yeah. the just to it is. Absolutely. We also got in the building, Sophia. Sophia. Hello. <laughs> just Sophia. hi. <laughs> Sophia is kind of also another silent TDS member that obviously you don't get to hear. But this this trip, we're in Minneapolis, obviously, recording a wrap episode. Sophia has been very vocal, right? T- I refute that. I am amazed. Like, I am so, like, I, I became a fan. I was like, yes. Every time she talks, I become an audience member. I'm like, mm. yes. Because Sophia is just eloquent, mashallah. She holds She's back. Like <laughs> she holds back for only, <laughs> only, for, only for the best of the best that she starts talking about. We were saying um, earlier, um, when she spoke on the stage at the conference, mm. we were baffled. Yeah. We were like, whoa, Sophia, I had no idea mm. that you could be like, you know, because we've never seen you in that way. So I was so impressed. I was like, oh my God, Sophia needs to be on the mic more often, period. No, the conference that she, you were spitting gems. You were spitting Mashallah. gems. Minnesota seems to be a special event. So. <laughs> this is where you were supposed to be. <laughs> oh, oh my God, God mashallah. mashallah. And then obviously, not uh, like well, the, not the last member, but we also have Muna in the building. Muna Sheikh Ahmed, Muna, Muna Productions, Muna the editor, Muna the general, Muna that lives all the way in Egypt, Muna the gangster. Uh, is there any more? <laughs> what that was a top hat. Muna, 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 Muna. Muna. SubhanAllah. Ooh. <laughs> billion, billion of one identities I can flip through. Uh, alhamdulillah. I was just, uh, like, you know, um, thinking that it's so disorienting for me to be in the studio, actually, in front of Mike, because normally mm-hmm. I'm just editing, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm just listening, you know. Uh, but I set things up, so alhamdulillah, I'm so excited to be here. Also, today I was pumping gas. Yeah. And I was like, I stopped, and I was like, yo, I'm on my way to the studio to to film to record the last episode of the digital sisterhood before we were like mm. stressing about when i was stressing about like actually booking a, a studio because believe it or not before the digital sister i've never booked a studio in another state like that was, or another country that was so like my heart was like pumping but before. you didn't act like that mona you you were I'm very saying, like i thought we can do whatever the hell we want stress. i said how are we gonna find a studio that's not a problem i can find a studio and then now you're telling me you were nervous? I oh never saw that. I've never been more nervous, bro. I was walking out. I was at work. I was emailing a bunch of different studios in Toronto. SubhanAllah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not work, making this work, it would the digital sister would not happen. <laughs> and I think that's I, the theme. That literally is. Wallahi, it's amazing. But it's, it's, it's great to be here. It's great to be looking at you yeah, while you're yeah. saying the T- words. Touching each other. Like, Sophia's on my right. Simma's in front of me. You're in front of me. <laughs> and we also have a live audience. Ooh. Can we? Can I hear a woo? So people know that we uh, act. Woo! Wow. Dug a hand around Damante. That was incredible. <laughs> 
<laughs> we Welcome. actually have a live audience. There. And guess what? We never set this up. This happened kind of by accident. <laughs> no, the real team been working on it. Yeah. They said, I got you guys. They yeah. Got a team. A very nice shout out to them. Yeah. It, yeah. Real team has been working hard. They brought everybody. They said, you guys want a live audience? It's happening. It's, it's happening. You guys want a studio? It's happening. You got two more mics? It's happening. Yeah. Because <laughs> we were no looking for a studio because we're all... Yeah. we're So just to take it back, mm -hmm. we're all in Minneapolis for a conference. Mm. Right? Um, we got invited to their Islamic, Abu, Abu Bakr Siddiq's Islamic Youth Conference. Um, they flew us out. Simo was already here. Muna flew from Egypt, and Safi and I also came. Um, and we were just here to just do the panel. And we're like, yo, like if we're here in Toronto, if we're here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, might as well do our wrap up so because most of us are here. Right? And I'm like, okay, cool, let's do it. And we were going to plan to book a studio here. Um, and I thought it was going to be monumental because it's the first time one and I have ever met, as you know, our greatest love story, um, which Sophia came up <laughs> with, it, but. The greatest love story of 2021. You guys need to know. <laughs> it's not coming from Vibe Check, it's coming from the sisterhood. Ooh, exactly. Oh, that's. Don't get emotional. Don't get started. Um, so we were here. We're like, okay, let's do it. And so when I was having a hard time, figuring out, like, okay, we have to figure out rates and stuff like that. And then we went to the conference and Real Project Qadr Allah had reached out to us saying, hey, we would like to do an interview with you guys. And then it took us a while to respond because we were go, go, go. So I responded to them like in the, like just a few days ago. I was like, hey, here's our number. Call us. We can do the interview quickly before we leave. And so we told them that, hey, we were also looking for students. They said, what? We can give you a student, no problem. No problem. And they said, we can get you a mic, no problem. We said, oh, okay, wow. Qadr Allah, Allah was like, Allah sent them. And it was really, really easy. And then now we're here together recording the final episode with a live audience as if we planned it. Ooh. Right? <laughs> it, it seems a little monumental, you know what I'm saying, to end the season. But you know, alhamdulillah, I think Allah wanted to make it kind of a, a special moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's take it back to the beginning. Mm. The question that always remains is that we dropped a season. We dropped a crazy season. We've expanded. We've, like, you have to understand, the podcast from day one until now, the way that it's transformed, the way that it's kind of gone viral, you, you could say, wasn't something that we all expected, but something that we all hoped for. Now, when Moon and I had started, right, we it's a it's a long like our relationship is is a part of that story but i really want to take it back to the beginning this episode we're going to also not only reflect on the season one but i also want to give you guys a backstory of who we really are right and we really couldn't do that obviously because we're producing the episodes but we're like this time let's 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 let our our family the tedious family know who we are i think it's how we get to know each other right so let's let's take it back all the way back play back okay <clears throat> How did TDS start, right? How did it start? Like, how did we all come together? Um, was it always initially supposed to be a podcast? What is it? It's interesting because the Digital Sisterhood on Instagram started on August 11, uh, 2020. Just uh, like the pandemic had, we had been a few months into the pandemic. Um, but just taking it back a little further was Ramadan, which was in May at the time, like May 2nd, Right. And we were having our first Ramadan in a pandemic, right? We were all feeling a bunch of, of emotions, as many people were at the time. And I was going through a lot at the time, right? I was trying to figure out what I was going to do in my life, okay? As we all do when we're graduating university, we ask ourselves, what is going to be my life? Where am I going to go? And I was struggling with the idea that I didn't know where I was going, but I had a lot of ideas, you know, like sometimes when you're living your life, someone might tell you, hey, you could do this, you could do that. But sometimes things don't resonate, right? Like, I can't see myself in that position. I can't see myself doing that. And so for so long, I was like, like, I always knew I wanted to do something faith-based, but I also knew I was a creative. And right, obviously being a first-generation immigrant, creative sounds like a taxi driver to them. No, no judgment to taxi drivers because they work hard and they make really good income. But when you're a first-generation, our parents have dreams for us to be lawyers and engineers and to have jobs that make the high-paying jobs. But, like, what if you have dreams? And what if those dreams have a cost, right? What if we struggle for many years? What if we don't give them the dollar amount that our parents are dreaming up? What if we just live for ourselves, you know? And it's just, it's just all of those things where, and also the guilt of that, right? Because you also want to make your parents proud. Um, and then you're also confused. <laughs> and so, like, it's just a mix of emotions. But that Ramadan was a very special Ramadan for me. I would say it was a, it was a turning Ramadan and this is my personal experience on one end obviously CP is having her own life Muna is having her own life Sim is having their own lives but we hadn't been connected just yet 
Um, but for me, I was like, okay, this Ramadan, I'm going to ask Allah for guidance. Not just um, iman-wise and like where I'm going to go after, after I pass away, but like what am I supposed to do in this life? What exactly am I supposed to fulfill? What is my job? I always knew I didn't want to live an ordinary life. I always knew I wanted to live extraordinary. And that's relative, right? Like somebody living an extraordinary, extraordinary life could look like somebody traveling to 46 countries. You know what I mean? Um, somebody could be somebody having a child, conceiving a child and, and raising them righteously. Everyone has their ideas extraordinary, but I didn't know what minds were. And sometimes, you know, I just want the job that Allah has ordained for me. That's the one I wanted. The one that would lead me to where I needed to end up. And so in Ramadan, I remember Hilal was like, and shout out to Hilal. Um, she's not with us and I wish she could have been here. But um, I spent a lot of Ramadan that year with her and the meshes were closed. But we had, um, we stuck in or whatever. Okay. And uh, we, not, not in an illegal way. We had keys. <laughs> um, definitely not thinking no masjid, you know. But uh, we would come in there and we would pray. Um, and she would lead Salah and we would make dua and I was like, she was making her dua and I was making my own dua and my dua was like, Yola, please let me know what I'm supposed to do here because I'm shaking it fam. Like, I don't even know where I'm supposed to go, but I know that what I'm doing is not enough. I know I'm not supposed to be here because I feel uncomfortable. Like, I know, I know I'm not supposed to be here. Please tell me what, what's what. And, um, and it was just like, I didn't know what it was. It kind of reminds me of like Musa Ali Salam's dua under the tree, right? Um, oh, not, right? Yalla, I am fakir, give me whatever good. He didn't tell you what good it is. Just whatever you think I need right now, let me know. And so that was the kind of moment I had. I was like, just let me know what good I'm supposed to do. And like, uh, let me like, let me do it. And so I had this dream, a little small dream, like not an actual dream, but like a dream that I always wanted to kind of start a platform centered around sisterhood. But I didn't know what it was. Like, it, I don't know if it was going to be a podcast, but I just knew that I wanted to start my own space and um, create this, like, unique place where women could love on each other, support each other, and remember Allah. But I didn't know what that was going to look like or how it was going to be gone through. But I knew I was like, okay, I need a logo. I need branding. I need people. So I knew that much. So I said, Allah, please, like, I have this idea. If it's khayr for me, Make it easy, and if it's not, remove the desire out of my heart. Why is it there? You know, remove it if it's not good for me. Anyways, the month ended. Ramadan finished. Eid be celebrated. And then my cousin, who lives in um, Maryland, she's also into marketing. She's like, oh, I told her about what I wanted. She said, that's easy. I know a girl, small girl on Instagram. She makes this dope art, you know. I know you want, like, uh, to have animations. Um, let's reach out to her. I was like, we're going to reach out to a stranger. You think she's going to say yes? I don't even have money to pay her. Like, I don't know where I'm starting. She's like, just ask her. Like, who cares? What's the worst? She's going to say no. I was like, that's pretty bad. No, it's pretty bad. <laughs> she's like, no, it's, it's fine. And so she reached out to Sima. This is where Sima comes in. And I'm having all these feelings thinking, okay, Sima, I don't know if she's going to say yes. I don't know who she is. Is she going to be like, pay up right now? Because I don't got a dollar to my name. Um, but I FaceTimed her. Me and my cousins FaceTimed Sima some young girl all the way in Minnesota, you know, that I had never met before. And I didn't even follow just yet because my cousin just told me about her. And I told her a little synopsis of what I want to do. And Sima smirked at me, looked at me and said, let's do it. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? She's like, yeah, why not? I'm here for it. And at the time, this is where the whole George Floyd thing was going on. So Sima was showing me the fist, you know, the fist in the air. Let's do this, you know, like, let's get this on. Let's like, you know, make a difference wherever we are. And I could tell she was inspired at the time what was going on in Minnesota and I was like, I was on that energy as well, but I was just, it was so easy. She said, yes, let's do it, no problem. Um, and she didn't even know me too well. I could have been a full-on criminal, who even knows, you know what I'm saying? And she just looked at me, she goes, I, I feel it, let's do it. I think it's a great idea, I support you. However help you need, let me know. I said, okay, well, okay, how does it work? She goes, okay, tell me what your ideas are. We ske she sketched the whole, like, as you, our, our famous logo of three women, right? We had, if you guys know, there's an aqabi on the left. There's a darker woman in the middle, right? And people don't realize that was intentional, right, mm -hmm. Sima? Yeah. I mean, that was the easiest yes I've ever said in my life because <laughs> Adar was very convincing. Like, I I love what Adar was talking about, how she wanted to do something that was faith-based, and that's how I also, t like, take into my art, too. So when she was telling me about the digital sisterhood vision, 
and how Sophia, going back to what Sophia said at the conference and making art that is filled with compassion and gratitude, um, even in the podcast, like when she explained it, I was like, yeah, of course. Why, why, do you, why would you think I would say no? That was so easy to say yes. And she was explaining to me how she wanted to look, the make, how she wanted the logo to look like. And I instantly just sketched it and I showed it to her right on the Zoom call. I was like, yeah, do you think this is going to work She sketched it on the spot. Yo. Is that normal? Have wow. you seen somebody sketching something on the spot? I'm talking, I'm talking about, uh, and mind you, I'm talking passionately. Dude. I want this. I want it to be, uh, 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 I want it to be a color inclusive. It needs to show different shades of brown. It has to be different versions of hijab. It needs to do this and that. And she's looking at me like, do, 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 okay? As I'm basically yelling into the FaceTime, okay? Because I'm so loud. <laughs> you do get and, excited. Yeah, I get excited. I get really loud. And she's just like, she's not even faced. She's just drawing. Okay? I love that energy, though. That was what I was here for. I When she said, I want, I want a logo that's filled with hijabi, black woman yeah niqabi like she was very articulate with what she needed and that was the easiest logo i've ever made in my life and i'm so <laughs> happy that people um assimilate the digital sisterhood with that logo because of just how energetic and how passionate she was of how she wanted to look like and that's also what i i the, the reason why i said it was like the easiest yes is because in general my art is that's how I want my art to be. I want people to be able to relate to it that well. And that's why I usually use black women characters. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad. Yeah, that was so easy to say. Yeah, so. It was, you know, it's funny because then that's when I started to get to know your art. And I mm -hmm. saw that you had drew a lot about the eldest daughter. Yeah. And and it was a story, right? Because mm -hmm. you had all these. And I was like, what? How do I find this girl? How did my cousin find her? It was, it's like as if it, we, it fit, you know, with what I wanted and what you were already doing. Qadr Allah. is what you were already doing, you know? The things that I was passionate about in words, you were drawing. Mm -hmm. You know? That's you know crazy. Um, Sima did a logo for us. I I, I did a robotics team uh, when yes. I was in. A plot in, twist. Uh, did you guys know each other at the time? I knew of her. like, Because yeah. uh, my robotics team, I make my students be the leaders. So one of our team members was contacted. Her. She said, I got a girl who does a logo. I got a Shout out and to then, Amal. Yeah, I don't, uh, shout out to Amal. And then she came back with this amazing logo. The The team is called Melanin Minds. And we were like the only black team in the, in the entire state that has wow. of, of like when we literally went to competition, there was like, it was like you could see who was metal in minds, you know? So um, it was such a beautiful um, logo. It was like uh, a guy and a girl and the girl was mm -hmm. in hijab. And it was it was so like very well done that I was like, this, you don't know a regular person. Who's this girl? I, I got to meet her one day. And then when you said, uh, was Sima, I was like, was Sima, Sima? Was Sima? Because imagine, because uh, as I met Sima, That's she came up with the logo. Yeah. She came up with the color scheme. Yeah. And remember, our color scheme, is obviously, if you know TDS, it's so colorful. It really That's, is. Yeah, and, it's, and, it, and it was intentional, right? Because mm -hmm. remember I said, you never see black women in colorful, bright colors that make you happy. Color right? Allah, because that's exactly what I do for my art exactly. too. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Sima is all over TDS. It really is. You know, and, and anybody that asks me, yo, how old, like, who is TDS, like, in branding? I said, it's Sima. Sima is a reincarnation of the brand of this of the, what our intentions are but in an art form you know and it's it's so beautiful because just seeing you draw the cover arts for all of these guests it has meant so much to them because they you they never see themselves in a beautiful art that way because no, every I'm car art, art you talk to them you ask them yeah. how do you want your remind you none of the cover art is us our own ideas it's Simba talking to the guests themselves that's the best part though because when you make it's not even a generic art like an art cover is is kind of telling a story and that's what i do with my art too i tell a story without words so the cover art my main idea all the time when i talk to the guest speakers is how could i how could i make the cover art speak to the podcast episode as much as possible and that's the best part is when talking to them and like seeing their reaction and seeing their suggestions because out of every guest is like 10 out of 10 mm -hmm. they're so good best ideas out there and they're very articulate with what they want to and it's just been a good experience overall because i get to do what i'm passionate about like how other and sophia and Moon are doing what they're passionate about with their work i'm able to be i'm able to have my dreams come true like that way too also could we talk about your development from the from the beginning up until mm -hmm. now is wild the way your art, it's, it's, talk it's, about it a little bit. How, how, how do you feel your art has transformed? Because we see it from the outside, outside. and we could see, we could even see it through your Instagram. Like, 
Tell, mm-hmm. tell us more. But I didn't always say, she's like, well, see, I'm sorry, there's so much work. I said, no, please give me more. <laughs> Because she really did. Yeah, I, I feel bad. Okay, you two yeah. are the same personality. You guys are very yes people. <laughs> yes, let's do it. So when two yes people come together, it's like, it's like one yes, gotta yes, break. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's like it never stops. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm like, either please do not say sorry. I hate when people I say know. sorry. Like, don't say sorry. I really appreciate that. Like, I really appreciate this. Like, I'm honored to do this in general. So the more work, the more art that I got to do for the digital sisterhood, the more I got better myself, art wise. Um, and it's a, it was just a great way for me to like have somebody's idea come to life Mm -hmm. and doing that every week was so amazing to me because I found practices and skills that I never knew I had it Mm -hmm. I had and I'm always like I wish I could do better and I always tell this to Adel I was like I wish I could do better because I'm doing the same thing over and over again I saw that I usually when I'm burnt out I do that Mm -hmm. um and it's not even about any like art wise just when school and like work Mm -hmm. but other than that I've seen myself grow because it's it's so meaningful to do it mm-hmm. and it's not like it's work for me and you know it's funny because you showed me your journal do you yeah. remember Sima has this journal of 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 drawings you drew when you were younger that you yeah. kept and then in the journal there's you growing and sharing different stories and ideas and I was like oh my god Sima your 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 you what you art is like it's it's you like it was so interesting your sketches and it's interesting because like and you can answer this question because i don't know this were you always a person that like made art your art a priority because it's like I, like now is you're a different person now you're an artist sim is an artist sim did a show for me to call, you know like for years i it was hard for me to call myself an artist mm-hmm. just because i didn't feel that way but now I'm knowing, like, it was seeing me, yeah, that art girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that's me. <laughs> that art girl, you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because at the time you just were drawing a lot. Like, you yeah. were just trying to. But now, a year, that, it's only eight months later, you've done an art show. You're Sima the artist. You're Sima the cover art digital server. Look, you have, you have chance because when I met you were just drawing for you and now you're drawing for people that resonate with your art mm-hmm. and I just I seeing you grow blows my mind yeah. and, it, and it's crazy because your whole attention was give me more other I just want to practice and everything that she was practicing she was getting better and she was getting better and better and that she would she has finally done so much that she couldn't you could not ignore that you weren't an artist because of mm-hmm. how much art you did <laughs> in the last but how much work our school we threw at you mm-hmm. that I felt so sorry and guilty for but Sima just delivered and just and you and you you prospered, and I'm just like I can see, like I can see people fangirling you, and I'm like I know her. <laughs> no, that's still hard for me to accept. Like yeah. things like that is hard for me to accept because um, when Ada said she made a dua, I I related to that a lot because my dua at that time was Allah, please let me be able to help somebody with this, because I was. The reason why I started making art, like the whole point of me continuing to do it and not like seeing it as a work thing, but more so for myself and how I started doing it for myself is because it was healing my, it was healing for me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always did it every time because if I came back from school and I had something to say, I'd draw it out loud because I didn't really articulate my feelings like that. So my dua was like, Allah, please let this be beneficial to other people too. Subhanallah. And and that's why I'm always like, please give me more because this is literally my dua make becoming true. Imagine she has a dua, I have my own dua. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we're we're trying to help people, we're trying to be at service. Mm-hmm. But um my question to you, Sima, is um now that you've like kind of cemented yourself like, as a full on artist, right? Um, and now you're 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 known and you're being credited and you're doing art shows. Um how do you want to continue? Like, how do you want, how does Simon want to transform? You know, like, what have you learned? See, so now that we're getting into reflection, it's season one, right? Mm-hmm. And you work closely with all the guests and you've listened to the stories. You've seen us stress and while out. Okay, we've had multiple breakdowns. <laughs> we've had multiple stress moments. Um, like, how would you sum up this, this last eight months together? Well, you and I have actually known you for for a year. Yeah, yeah. on Zoom, imagine. Yeah. And this is our first like <laughs> few days meeting like in person. <laughs> so I'm here fangirling. Everybody else is fang- fangirling too. I'm I'm also fangirling. <laughs> um, but I've seen um, I've seen a, a breakdown <laughs> with stress and just figuring things out. Like even doing the vibe check, I was literally on Adobe Illustrator just figuring things out last minute, and just YouTube tutorialing everything, and. 
I hope I could transform into having a stable um, set skills because before it would just, oh, I just, I, I'll just figure it out. I'll just, I'll just mm-hmm. search it up on Google. How do I do this on Adobe yeah. Illustrator? And I used to think, and I, and I remember, because like Simba also created the branding of Vicek, um, the box, yeah. the coloring, the all game. of it. And she's never done that before, okay? Never and in I was my life. freaking out. I was like, Simba, I'm so sorry. How we go? She goes, look to me like, we'll figure it out. You know, and there was there was a day I'll never forget one night where we really need to submit the the final doc of Vicek, the branding to our supplier, and Simba didn't know how to chance the Adobe the Adobe mm-hmm. thing. And Simba, it's, it's like midnight. I said, Simba, how are you gonna do this? Fam, I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. I said, Simba, you, that's not an answer. How do we figure it out right now? I can't leave you to this. Like, do we hire someone? She said, no, no, no. I've gone through life figuring it out. It always figures out. I went that- through school. <laughs> I'm in uni right now. I'm just figuring things out, to be honest. <laughs> like, that's one thing about me, I'll figure it out. She'll figure it out. And the next day, you figured it out. Yeah. You messaged me, I figured it out. I said, what is she on? Like, I was so impressed. Because, Simba, you, you don't move like a person that doesn't know. Like she'll do a whole Adobe show, and you and you've never again like you've never done um, product. Yeah, branding. product design. I've never. This was my first time doing product design. To be honest, I was just starting out with Adobe Illustrator too, mm-hmm. and so shout out to Hanan too. But when she sent me the file, I was very scared. But I did not want to show it. <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> and by the way, Hanan is our like also on the team. She's like our money girl, distribution. She's all like, we need yeah. this deadline. We need this. We need that. So when Hanan sent you that, you were like, uh, uh-uh. uh, this is this is too much. And mind you, I looked like at a, it and I was yeah. like, I don't know what this is, but <laughs> yeah. Simon's gonna figure it out. <laughs> mind you, it was like 135 cards. Yeah. yeah. And like manually, you yeah. have to put it in the text. Yeah. And I remember I I called you too. I said either yeah, I lost the file. Yep. And I'm just smiling. I'm like, it is what it is. What can we do? And point. I redid it. Yeah. I redid it again. You and lost oh the file. You redid all She redid it. it. Yeah. It was, it was just figuring things out. Like, okay, how do I make the, the font all come? Like, it was just very technical stuff yeah. that I've never done before. But I was very excited. Like, I was scared, but I was excited to, mm-hmm. to grow. So that's how, again, like, how do I want to transform, like, transform myself? I want to be able to be stable and have set skills where mm-hmm. I don't, like I would still love to just try and figure things out, but I love to not um, have to do that all the time and be a stable artist. So that's why I had a hard time calling myself an artist because I thought I didn't have the skills for it. And I didn't go to school for art too. And I've just self-taught myself. So that's the reason why I didn't want to call myself a graphic designer or illustrator because I didn't feel that I deserved that title. And I was just figuring things out on the way. And even when people were commissioning me stuff, I said, why are you coming to me? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, the with the po- not the imposter syndrome like, I have the mean? biggest imposter syndrome by the way yeah, to I this day yeah. um, like I, I'm still getting getting used to to respecting myself in a way that I accept compliments mm. because it's it's just like things that I grew up with and things that I learned that I have to unlearn mm-hmm. but um, I hope to transform myself into a person who's very comfortable with calling yourself an artist so let long. me just remind you you went from drawing in the sketchbook to drawing yep. and doing a gallery and then creating a product oh, because mm. you are not al- i know but you are not allowed to say you're not an artist okay. because you're more than an artist at this point uh, people i don't i've never seen a, a regular artist jump and become product designer yeah graphic, you know, design. graphic designer and in, in for the instagram you know what i i just realized that's just the story of tds and i always tell us that it's like we don't we don't gather people who already know what to do. We gather people who are willing to start, um, who have the energy and the drive and understand the mission. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you don't have to be like skilled in editing or skilled in videography or skilled in like you know even hosting. Like I've I've watched other grow as a as a person who hosts and be able to narrate stories and see the vision you know um the last couple episodes that we shot i remember like I, there was moments where i had to stop and be like yeah i'm like you on fire today no, i like, know that day i got emotional on? yeah that day i got emotional because in the summer you gave me a critique yeah you said you got to do better mm-hmm. like, and, I, and i remember i took that i don't know i'm a empath so i took criticism very <laughs> very seriously and when you told me that, like one day, when and I remember the episode that I I feel like I hit a turn, mm. which was when the cat when the cat lady found true love. Mm. I was on something. I was on some other time that day. So and cool. um and mind you, for people who don't know, I, I don't actually write a script. Yeah. They're like, I, you know, and a lot of podcasters have a script. Mm. What do I do, Mona? 
<laughs> you freestyle. She really freestyle. The thing I told Ala is, I want you to be so authentic to your style that other podcasters start to copy you. You know what I mean? So um, one of the reasons I chose, uh, I was asking Adar to do this uh, this podcast is because you have such a unique style of um, hosting that is very authentic and comes from a pure, authentic source. You know what I mean? When you hear something, you're not like, you're not creating a story around it, but you're actually like authentically just reacting to it. And that's what I was looking for when I was, when I was, uh, um, when we started out. And so, but for you, you were very overwhelmed with like, you know, the, the mic, the podcast, the expectations and what should you sound like? And I could see that like kind of suffocate your storytelling. And all that. one of the things I was telling out there is like, just be as authentic to yourself as possible. That's what I want. I want, I want even if you say things weird, I I keep like to me it's weird, but like that's your style, you know what I mean, and it really works. And as you can see, people loved it. And one of the things that I, I'm still like kind of like you know I'm poking at you is 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 I want Ada to tell more of her own stories because she's like uh, one time I told her yo why don't you just do an episode of just you? She said I already did one. That's <laughs> it. I'm never gonna do it again. God. <laughs> We need guests, other people. Like I'm like, you're running away from like the spotlight. <laughs> I can see, but you have so many stories. You're such a good storyteller that people want to hear more of you. And that's um, what some of the review or like some of the feedback people said uh, in the beginning it was like, I want to hear more other. I want to hear more other. And it was like, um, I tell her that, and I think you're slowly growing into that. Um, there's a, a lot of lessons that we could all learn from it, uh, each other. It's not that we are. Each story that we bring is not that um, that person is somehow better than everybody else. Matter of fact, it's the re- it's the fact that they are like everybody else, and we all experience this. That makes it so special, and makes everybody really connect with it. But the thing that Simon was saying about growth, having to like be put on the spot, like you know that that comfort zone, that happened to me too. My editing, I don't think I've edited this much like ever in my life it was um it was really like i felt like i was being put on the spot to grow and i really loved it um because it was like a lot of times i'm in my head i'm a perfectionist there's a lot of things that i've edited but i don't release or i don't finish because i'm like ah this is this is not matching my taste and sometimes it's like a as an artist there's a gap between your taste and your skills you know and it takes a while to get there and the only way you're going to get there is if you keep making things so this year, really, um, I had a, a, a model that I was going by. I was like, I'm just going to I'm just gonna produce trash. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. literally what I said. That's <laughs> I was exactly like, what you said. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, I'm just going to produce trash. I'm not going to worry about what it, what it sounds like or the quality, you know. And then people really reacted and really loved the things I consider trash. So yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, there's so many um, skills that I, that it, was, it was so freeing. I didn't really suffocate myself with it anymore. I was like, okay, if it didn't work out, the way I want it to be, I'd be like, okay, it's all right. Um, we're gonna move on. This year is just the trash year. Yeah. That's that's that was my consultation. So speaking of I'm trash year, yeah. Mona, yeah. um, how did so the the, the not present- to call TDS trash. I, I really want to <laughs> <get out laughs> back. No, no. We had a moment in the car. I was no, like, oh, I was so just gonna good. say Mona was listening to it inside the car. She's like, wow. <laughs> The podcast is actually good. I say, yeah, you produce it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Not you recognizing. Oh, I, I turned it off for this just because I was, I was having a moment in the car today. I was like, oh, wow, we, we got this far and this long. We did so much. I was like, well, I just turned on a random episode because I was like, we're going to do a recap. Let me just go visit back. And then I was like, whoa, this is this is not <laughs> bad. This is not bad. This is actually pretty good. <laughs> oh my god! No, I <laughs> think the digital sister had really, really pushed everyone to of, to do it because mm. there again, how Mona says she's a perfectionist. Like we're just overthinking ourselves. Oh, yeah. I have to do. I have to be this skilled in this and this and this, and then I'll I'll start. But it really pushed everybody on the spot to to do it and just try everything that we wanted to try. So I. That's the best part about the digital and how it's coming together. And the reason why it's going off is because it's genuine work, to yeah. be honest. And a bunch of women who are uncomfortable yeah. with what they do, but they're pushing themselves regardless. Um, so just um, jumping on, Muna. Muna, yeah. I think the biggest question everybody wants to know. What? Okay, the question I hear time and time again is, how did a girl who lived in Minnesota but moved to Egypt, help produce a podcast with a girl in Toronto. 
in Toronto time, right? How does that even work? How did that happen? What is Muna and Ada's story? Why is it a love story? <laughs> so Muna, <laughs> please story. let yeah. the audience know, our, our TDS fam, how did you and I meet? Ooh, I think you're the storytellers, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my part. Um, uh, so for me, yeah, this started. Uh, I've always wanted to do a uh, podcast. I think um, ever since I switched from nursing. Anybody who's in nursing school may Allah help you, but um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I switched from nursing to uh, communications to digital media. Um, it was very confusing for my family, but um, it was something that I really believed in. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what the manifestation of it was, but I knew that somehow if there was digital content that was able to connect hearts to Allah, I wanted to be the one who did it. You know, that's what I wanted to be my legacy. So uh, years went by, you know, you, you get all types of like, you know, I, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it will happen. You know, I always tell people, I don't know what's going to I tell them crazy things. I always tell them like, I don't know my crazy ideas right now. <laughs> She's like, that was I had another friend who was like, I don't know what that, where do you get these ideas? You're a crazy person. <laughs> but I was like, if I just keep talking about them, that will happen eventually. So um, at the beginning of this year, I was uh, coming back from home. And I was just on my phone. I was uh, I was like, yo, it would be really nice to create a community that, of uh, filmmakers that were Muslim, that were Somali. And uh, not Somali really as much, but Muslim and uh, women. I think I was like, there's something unique about our stories and something unique about the way we think. Um, and I really want to create a group. And, you know, with film, you can't do it alone. So then um, I asked, uh, I was just browsing. And in the back of my head, it always runs in my mind whenever I see somebody who's a creative. And then Ada was the first person that I saw. She had like a really cinematic video. <laughs> and then in her highlights, she had her with a camera. And uh, at this time, you weren't wearing a naqab, I think. Mm -hmm. you weren't I wearing was a not a naqabi. Yeah. And so I was like, yo, this girl, and when you talk. It's a vibe. Like, it, literally, <laughs> when you talk, it's like the whole, uh, it's like you're ready to tune in. It's like those good storytellers. So then I was just going through her highlights and she has one post. And I was like, wow, this looks so amazing. I was like, yo, I think if I collaborate with this girl, um, it would be really cool. And I was like, let me just, let me just shoot my shot. Let me Wait, just, let me just shoot and score. Let me just see what it is. You know, <laughs> she slid in her DM. <laughs> she did, and she slid like a bobsled, like you know, a bob, uh, sled, like a bobsled team. Yeah, you slid fast. <laughs> okay. And I was like, "Salam alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh." I said, "What did I say? Hey, I don't really love uh, your vibe. You seem like you're into film and Islam. Is kind of like what I also do. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, would you be?" cool with um having a uh, zoom hangout because i just learned uh, earlier is like if you just vi if you just have somebody that you're talking to and you really um want to become friends if you don't ask for like an action it's never gonna happen so i was like let me put an action yeah because you like, sent yep. me the link you didn't even give me an option about you meet me right here <laughs> i was like yeah you want to do a zoom and yeah she was like and then like you responded so quickly like yeah of course and i was <laughs> and then i was like oh my god this, this is easier than i thought I, you know and then um and then i was like oh uh friday do you want to do friday she said yeah friday i did i was like this time and then she was like Yo, um yeah what time is that minnesota how did you know i was in minnesota I, I I stalked you. Oh, you did. You, you think I responded to you before not preying your your whole thing? Oh, okay. I saw your twi a taekwondo. Uh, yeah. I saw like you were you you were a person that was very like expression. I saw your whole business. <laughs> like I went in there, in there. You know, I was even reading your comment section. Oh my god! You know, god. and I was like, okay, let me, because like the thing for me is that I'm I I want to know who I'm working with, right? Yeah. But I don't need to know who you are. I just need to know how you feel. Mm. Like how do I feel looking at yourself? What do, do I move? think? And I'm a very believer. Or not, I'm an observer. Mm. You know, I observe a lot of people, and I can observe a lot of things from content. Yeah. And um, and at the time you talked about, and 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 Sophia will definitely agree to this. I'm very much into women and gender studies and human rights and Islam. You talked a lot about women's issue, so I already was like, oh, she my vibe. Mm. You know, like I already was like, she's my vibe. Cause yeah. and and it's funny, cause like um, uh, we were at a bookstore the other day, and Sophia gave me a book that said women, gender, and Islam. Because most of you know that that's my that's my thing. I, I'm interested in that kind of stuff, and you had all of that. You were talking about like women, and you were talking about really like uh, important conversations about um, trigger warning, sexual assault, and you were talking about all these things that were really important. And I thought that was I was I admired you. I didn't even know who you were. 
you know? Um, I met you like after the craziest year of my yeah, life. Yeah, so like, and that's the interesting <laughs> part. You were going so through something at the time, yeah. but I didn't know, but I just knew your message. I you received saw, it. Yeah. I received your message. I understood it. Yeah. Um, and I love that you were vocal. You didn't back mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. And so, I, of course, when I went to you, I already knew a little bit about what I, I already had a preconceived notion of yeah. who you were. So I, I, said, I have my life on the world. You know, yeah. you, yeah, you I had did one it. post. So I didn't even know you were not <laughs> in Minnesota. I was, I, was, I was finding where I can link up with you. And you then, thought I was in Minnesota? Yeah, I really thought you were in Minnesota. I thought you were a Minnesota girl never in my mind did I cross you were like in nah. Canada or Toronto nope so, Toronto girl so then you go like oh I, I think we're an hour difference and I was like oh. and then I was like I started looking I was like oh I guess you're in Toronto then I was like yeah okay uh, let's do an hour difference and we did six o'clock I think we talked on like uh, uh earlier in the week and mm-hmm. then and then I messaged you again to double check and i was like you're not gonna ditch me or something like you did say that <laughs> to me so, yeah you're like hey, i'm like we're, gonna be not, we're, we're still doing our zoom right we're not, we're not you're not gonna ditch me right yeah. you're like no of course yeah Damn. i said to you why would i ditch you yeah you know you're so, of course you're so oh, i loved your energy i was uh, kind of surprised by it because i don't know like sometimes when you're in your head about things you kind of expect the worst from people mm. so then like you said like you, uh when you're about to reach out you expect someone not to just say no but to be like you are crazy yeah. Yeah. How dare you ever think this or, or, or something like that? You know, how dare you have the audacity to ask? You, know, you imagine something as crazy as that. But we it's have not, an you know. exaggerated understanding of like how somebody's yeah. going to receive. Because remember, me reaching out to Sima, for example, I felt like I was asking for help. Mm. And, I'm, and I'm not very good at asking for help. Me and you said that too to me too. Like, yeah. I'm not very good at asking for help. But it, at the time when you reached out to me, I had decided that I was going to start something. You know, so you came to me and I almost felt like you it was, you were like sent. I was like, oh, maybe I can collaborate. Maybe I can learn from her yeah. because you had considered yourself like a creative and a filmmaker. And I was into film, as you saw in some of my content, but I was doing it from my iPhone. Mm. Right. And I didn't know anybody in my community that was into that stuff. So I always felt like I didn't know where to go. But I knew I always knew in my heart I was a creative, yeah. you know, but I didn't know how. Like I, nobody around me was one. Exactly. So where am I supposed to go? I sound crazy talking to a bunch of people who aren't creatives or at least I, I understood because they could be all people could be creative and, and not verbalize it mm. or share in it. But at the time, I didn't know anybody that verbalized me. They were also creative. So I always felt like I when I posted on my stories, I was the friend that every uh, that was around me goes other that posts really cinematic videos you know and they would always say to me you should do this but i didn't know how yeah nobody knew the how part like how do i go from being a girl that just posts to instagram and, and i know sophia loved my stories because she told me the other day um she said she's like i love when you used to post cinematic stories and like i was like i, I miss that too and, and i'm still being creative now differently yeah. but i was my thing because I, that was the only outlet i had yeah. that's the only outlet i had to express what my heart was burning for so i just spent my time in there i'd be in school and then i'd be doing cinematic shots <laughs> everywhere i went telling stories around me um but when i met you you just seemed like you were already there so i was like okay bomb i met the only person what well, felt like the only person in this dunya that could share that with me so i was like did yeah you, did you feel it right away what yeah. uh, when we <laughs> met on the zoom can I just say this is why it's the love story, that, that instant <laughs> connection. Yeah, we're just excited. I was, I was like, I was, I was in my room, right? So that I turned on the Zoom, and then Heather has like a real. If you guys, Heather has a really, I call it a cinematic. It looks like an interview set, like a bedroom, like you know, it's. You don't even think she's in her bedroom. It's like she's got the green um, plants, and the, you have a, a really beautiful contrast of white and green. It's like almost like at a at a at a, at a furniture store, yeah. like one of them displays. And it's like really, um, you said you you put in a lot of work to yeah, like, it's like an IKEA room. Yeah, it's like an IKEA room, right? I was like, she used to work at IKEA. Fun fact, yeah. yeah. no okay, it makes sense. Yeah. So fun makes fact, sense. I worked at IKEA and yeah. I hated my job, but I was like, okay, let me decorate my room so i can create content in my room so my room was set up like a set it really was guess what and everyone in toronto my friends that know me knows that i literally designed my entire room so i could do, be creative but i was like absolutely. i can't be creative in a room with a mattress on the floor that's all i had guys <laughs> i was living like a prison inmate okay <laughs> that i committed like six counts of murder i only had hull- one bed on the floor and a white room and to be honest i threw away all my stuff because i was super stressed and i needed nothing to be my room i needed to practice minimalism because my my brain was full of stuff yeah. but my mom came into the room and said you're 28 years old and you're living like you're in a <laughs> in jail and i was like okay maybe and she goes and you work at ikea so can you do something and my mom was like maybe reach out to somebody that can help you design a room i said i am creative i can design my room you know and i designed my room you know and so and i made sure that every because i didn't have a big room 
my room is like, it's really yeah. small. Sophia's seen it. It's tiny, you know? But I made sure that every corner of my room was set up so if a camera was there, it would look beautiful. So it, it set up like a huddle of creative and I knew that if I was in a room that, was, that I, I created, I could create. Does that make sense? Wow. I made no sense, but I knew my environment had to reflect what my heart wanted. I love that. Or I wouldn't do anything. Exactly. Your environment dictates a lot. You know, mm-hmm. Islam, like how you live, yeah. cleanliness and all stuff affects the the actions that you do and how you maneuver. After my room changed, yo, I started dreaming. Wow. My room made me dream. I would sit in my room and look at the, the twinkle lights around me. I'd be dreaming about things I want to do, yeah. you know, even though I had no mean, no means to do it. But I felt like my room said, this is a girl who lives in this room who's a creative yes. despite that she goes outside she's just a regular hijabi girl you know but in this room i was ava duvaray i was all of these things even you in my really own head were, you really were like honestly i remember looking at you and i was like yo this it looks like a talk show set <laughs> like i was like this girl got the aesthetics she has everything and then you just started talking i don't know how i th- maybe i mentioned on your highlights was like paris or something yeah then we got you got into this crazy story about you hopping a fence in <laughs> Paris and like I was like yeah she also got crazy friends like, she, like and then the way you were telling the story and I was just sitting there and I was like I think I don't know if at the end of it or the, I told you this I was like yo I feel like I've known you my whole life we literally met like did we talk for like two three hours we were talking for three hours yeah. and we didn't realize yeah yeah and that's when you introduced me to the digital sister and like you showed me what you were doing i was like yo this is so cool like i was yeah. like yeah and, and i told you like i met this girl somebody like i kind of heard of her yeah. and you guys are from the same state right yeah but you had heard about her and i was like yeah i work she goes how she's like what was looking at me like how about toronto girl are you talking to Siva and yeah. all these things and i remember you said to me out of the blue like you caught me off and he said i feel like i know you my whole life this is weird. And I looked at her and said, yeah. In the middle of our shakwa, in the I, middle of the shakwa, I got up and I was like, let me go make some shakwa. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, went to, I went to get some shakwa. Like, I came back. I was like, that's how good of a conversation it was. It was, it was amazing. And then um, I think what it was is like, uh, you were you were also, you did the marriage ebook. So you showed me that to, and then you were talking about how you were going to do uh, a card game. You were going to do a card game. Like, you didn't know, we didn't have the name yet, but we were going to do a card game. And then I was like, oh, this is amazing. Oh, I never want this yeah, to end, you yeah. know? And then you were like, uh, you told me um, that you guys were just about to have your meeting on Sunday because it was yeah. Friday. Because at that said, team, there, yeah. was, there was a team assembled, yeah. a small team you at were, that point. You were like, I'm just getting all these people together. And then I was like, you know, initiative, ask for something. Actually, I was like, you all you think I could just like, you know, just join the Zoom and like just yeah. sit on the, <laughs> just be a fly on the wall, you <laughs> know? This girl goes like, yeah, of course. And I was like, oh, I thought it was going to be like a closed meeting, you know. At the time, it's like, you know what's incredible? It's like, I always thought that I'm just moving on vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. And I feel like it's not led me astray. Like, yeah. I think, honestly, um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is like a, a story, a love story that's been. You cough, you cough. Cough, cough. Go ahead. Go off. Go off. <laughs> you can cough. <coughs> go off. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody breathe. <laughs> it's okay. Cough. Cough. Wow. Well, okay. There you go. Okay. Good. Definitely going. Whenever you need to know, it's not. Guess what? No, it's Guess not. what? No, Whenever it's you need you to guys, cough. You guys, come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in, come in. Come in. Anybody else need to cough? They cough. No, just me. That was very good. Okay. Whew. Holding in a cough is nice. It's not. It's not, not, not easy. Not good. Build yeah. Up. Yeah. I wish somebody recorded that box. <laughs> <laughs> it did record. That's why I'm like. No, I mean the video of everyone <laughs> moving, going, <laughs> drinking water, and like laughing. <laughs> everyone's stiff, bro. Oh, oh, what's that? You guys, you guys. By the way, you guys can laugh. Fun. Yeah, you guys can laugh. You guys are a live <laughs> audience for a reason. Yeah. 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 I have everyone, to say, how many times have I been in studio? And I've like said things in the background. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it's normal. Right. Are you holding your? No, 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 don't hold your breath. Now you holding your breath. <laughs> we have to hold our breath. No, 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 no. You guys, you guys can laugh. I'm they, 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 oh, they're gonna think we're liars. That we have a lie about it. No, they, all they heard right now is woo. That could have been all of us making it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can snap fingers. Oh, okay. And you can laugh. I think it's okay to hear laughter in the background. You know. Okay, three, two. Pause. I know. The story is getting so good. But wait, I have a message for you that you're going to want to hear, okay? Have you been looking for an opportunity to reconnect your faith by building a relationship with the Quran? Or even learning Quranic Arabic? Or even getting your questions answered about different rulings? Well, let me tell you. The Ribat Academic Institute is an online program that provides traditional Islamic education for women 
by women. Yes, you heard me right. Islamic education for women by women. Yes, all the courses are taught by female scholars. Allah mabarak. You have you have a choice from over 50 courses ranging from sira to tajweed to fiqh and hadith. You can even take in classes like the nine names of Allah or purifying the heart or the reflections from the Quran and the lessons from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as a mentorship matters program on how to guide and support and help others. Ribat's online classes have been reconnecting Muslim women from all around the world with their faith and helping them reclaim their traditionally held leadership roles in Islamic scholarship, mentorship, and community care. All classes are held live online and recordings are posted after class. And the courses, guys, the courses are affordable. They're not expensive at all. They also provide country discounts and scholarships are available. Scholarships are available. So there's no reason why you shouldn't sign up. So if you're interested, visit Robata, that's R-A-B-A-T-A dot info, I-N-F-O forward slash T-D-S and register today. I think uh, the the thing I always think about is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote all of our stories together. All of our stories, I feel like each of us had our own separate places and our own separate worlds. And it's like every time it's a reflection of that. That's why I'm like, you know, when you do your work and you do the best you can and then you have to wakul, it's the best vibe ever. That That's why I always tell her, if we tried, we did this, we we, we did our best, we worked our hard, hardest. And, and if, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And actually, a lot of times what I've noticed with the digital sisterhood is something better always happens. Mm something better than i had planned has always happened and i was like alhamdulillah so you joined our first i onboard you on our first onboard you on our first meeting yeah i was so excited it was my fa- i was smiling throughout that entire conference and the thing is it's like it's not you you guys think that me and t- minnesota and toronto is a big deal minnesota and toronto is not a big deal at all it's like there are people from joining in from uh saudi arabia <laughs> and dubai <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, this is a global sister. It's, it's literally, I think, um, the reason... I, I want to ask you, though, Alar, like, how did you come up with the name, The Digital Sisterhood? So, there's only one thing I knew for a fact. Whatever the title of the pocket or the, the platform needed to be, it had to be self-explanatory. Explain. Like, it had to be able to stand alone. That anybody, if they saw it anywhere, they knew what it meant. Like, I didn't have to tell you some cool way or some secret because I wanted it something to be known internationally. I knew I wanted it to be global, right? And I knew it had to also be a word that can be translated in multiple languages. So I was kind of intent. I, I'll, see, I'm a weird, I'm a visionary. I think I can consider myself. I knew what it looked like many years down. Hmm. I just didn't know the tools and the, the, the thing, the next thing to do. But I knew from a bigger sense, it had to be something I wanted to be global and it had to be something very inclusive. So what am I doing? Where am I working hard? I'm working hard in a digital space, right? And then who am I targeting? Sisters. What am I trying to create? A sisterhood. You know, it just all the whole thing and it's the digital sisterhood, meaning it's the, the I want it to be the, like the, like every, every book has a the, meaning as if it's the only thing standing, because I want it to be the biggest thing standing. Does that make sense? Mm. I know it sounds so weird, like how did you, I, I mean, it, in all. my twinkly room, that's what I was dreaming about, yeah. sitting in my nice, you know, IQ looking room, thinking about something that I wanted to affect globally. You know, and so I was thinking about the digital sister because I wanted to be something that was self-explanatory. Then no matter if anybody came from any place, they would know the vibe. It's almost like when you walk into a room, you know the conversation. You don't need anybody to explain anything to you. Because also, when you're working in a sisterhood, the the best feeling you could ever feel is when you walk into a room is, you know what, Guan. Like, you know when you walk into a room, you know when you know your friend? You don't need to like, hey, what are you guys talking about? You know the third person I always might feel left out? Mm. Hey, what are we talking about? I don't want there ever to be a space like that. I want everyone to walk in as they are, like this. Like have a hotel. Does everybody remember have a hotel? People used to walk in like the cartoon. Anyways, I'm a weirdo. They used to come in and just talk, you know? <laughs> and nobody had to explain because you knew what Taguan, like you knew what was going on. Not me sound like a Toronto man. You know what was going on, you know? And I knew that's what I wanted. I wanted anybody from anywhere to say they can walk into the TDS and knew exactly what the, what's happening. Who's talking? What are we talking about? What are we here for? What's the mission? Just by the title. 
I right? Love that. I love uh, that's what, that's why I called it the digital dread. That's incredible. Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. Uh, now that I think about it, that's we kind were, of profound. I don't yeah, know what I was doing, it, but it really was. It's, yeah, it's amazing because we were we were almost gave the the podcast a different name than the digital sister, and we were kind of bl- brainstorming what to call the podcast since it came after. Yeah, because um, I already had the platform. Right? Yeah, you had the platform, and you were like, maybe we should call it something different. But I said, why? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Should be self titled. Yeah. And yeah. then you were like, I don't know, we were we were playing out, and then we said, yeah, you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, after a while, it convinced me because in the beginning, I thought I I, I thought it was gonna be like a personal project, but you got you were like, the digital sister is me. Yeah, that's like, exactly what I said I was to you. Like, oh, okay, it's not separate. Okay, no. I was like, so then wherever I went, it, it went was, with I me. I think it was the b- best decision that we called it that the digital sisterhood, and um, it really has created that environment. And I think that's one of the reasons like you and I click so much. Because for me, it's also one of like my values to be to include everyone. I really don't want to sit. I don't feel comfortable sitting in a in a, in a space where somebody is is excluded in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, like whenever I'm sitting in spaces, I'm kind of always gauging and aware of like how other people are feeling. So you did that as well, and it was it was uh, very um, smooth. And it's it's, it's like a lot yeah. of Hano Tala nuance. We complimented each other very well. We were like the really same well. person. It's yeah. interesting, right? Yeah, it's um, nice. and we 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 have different talents. You know, my friends tell me that you guys are like copy paste. Like they say do, we're copy paste. Do, do your friends say that? They they all they know is that there's this girl that Ada talks to all the time. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I it's as we started to get, we became very close friends. Truly, you know, and it's yeah. crazy because I feel like um I feel like you. And I don't want to get emotional because it's... Get <laughs> I'm, emotional. Gonna, I'm not getting emotional. Jonathan does not hear the <laughs> tissues. You can't. No tissues the around. real team is here. Real uh, team. <laughs> John, you know, I kind of miss him. He's, he's, he's always there ready posted, you know? <laughs> With his much. eyes wide out. He's like, is anybody about to drop a tear? I'm here. But um, what I mean is that, like, uh, I think what I value the most about you, despite the fact that we're doing work together, is that... Um, when we are working together and when we are struggling, you will always remind me of Allah mm. that this is not something that's just dunya. It really has everything to do with our akhara. So, like when we had money issues and we were starting, we were producing our first podcast episode. We didn't have a dollar in our account, True. but all we had was this vision and dream that we knew it needed to happen. And I remember you were like, "I don't know how we're gonna don't." And I remember like, "I don't know how we're gonna get this money to produce the first episode." And when it looks at me dead in my eye through FaceTime and says, "Are you okay?" I said, I'm okay. We know the biggest bank in the world. I said, no, we don't. She goes, yes, we do. I said, you got a contact? She goes, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said, oh, God. I said, this girl said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has access access to the biggest bank. So that means we have access to the biggest bank. And I looked at her, and I was like, that's deep. And she's going to be we just have to ask for it. Um, and, and I was like, wow, okay, that's very simple. She simplified it. <laughs> very simple. When I was feeling very complex, ish, like complex feelings, she simpled and she said, listen, like we got us this far because of Allah. So like, why are we worried about what, what he gives us everything? And like, at the time, I didn't know if this, if anything was going to come to fruition, right? But I remember I went to my companions in Toronto, right? Um, and I said to them, like, and I remember Hilal was the first person I went to. Hanan was the second person I went to. And I said, I don't have money. They said, I'll give you, we'll give you our hurt. Like, we'll give you money. Like, I, I, I don't mind donating. I don't mind sponsoring an episode. And that mm. also made me very emotional mm. because they they knew. Like, they're like, okay, Adar believes in this. And uh, oh my god, I I was telling myself, n- uh, cry if you don't cry. I was like, I, I I know it's not, but I, no, I'm a cry baby, and everybody knows I used to be a thug. I'm not a thug anymore. But um, wasn't gonna say. I I just I I'm emotional because I I know who the people that got me here. You know, got all of us here, and they weren't far. They were very close. And it's interesting because um, I know Mona, and I know nobody knows this actually, but um. One guy reached out to me that I used to know. His name is Omar Khan. And this is a really plot twist um, because when I started TDS and after a few months and I told him about it, it was an idea. And um, we were working on Vicek as a team. If you remember, we needed money. Do you guys remember? Mm-hmm. We needed like a money to start. Yep. Like, right? Yeah, yeah, for and do you remember time. I got the money? Mm. I don't know if you guys remember. I don't know if you guys no, ever asked me. me. We got this mm-hmm. money from this guy named Omar Khan. I met this guy in 2020, just before the pandemic, at a human rights event. Um, we, were, we were advocating for um, education and how people, kids, 
who had like had learning disabilities were in programs that weren't being funded. And so there was a lot of kids like um, sipping through the system. And I had left university to go to this like town hall meeting in Brampton. And if you know me, I live in the West End. Brampton is not my jurisdiction, nor is it my business. But I went there to advocate for my community. By the way, I designated myself to go. And I went there and I dragged my friend Sarah Farah and a few other people. I remember I dragged JJ. And they said, okay, let's go. Let's go fight the free fight. Because I, all I was doing at the time was fighting, okay? <laughs> the system. <laughs> and I went and I just, I, was, I wanted to speak at that event, but I wasn't able to and it really upset me. And there was this one guy who came before me. His name was Omar Khan. He was talking about education because he had a program that he was working with Syrian um, refugees in Toronto and uh, in, well, in, I think it was Thornhill. I'm not sure. Um, if you're listening, Omar, I'm so sorry. Thorn but Cliff? Thorn Cliff, yes. Thorn Cliff. And he was doing this entire program to help them integrate and like figure out pro- appropriate resources. He was like a, basically a humanitarian, okay? And he was so good. Like, and he had, he had wore very simple clothing, you know? Um, very plain and like, and, but he spoke with so much energy and passion when he spoke in there. He, you thought he was paging people, like, you know? And he was, you know, he was really trying to uh, bring something to light. And as soon as he got off the, the front of the stage or like the front, I went straight to him. And I said to him, I like what you said. And I like that you dressed humble. And he looked at me, he goes, thanks. And, and, and on my phone, he saved us, Omar Humble Khan, you know? <laughs> and, um, and I told him how frustrated I was about how I wasn't able to talk. And he was upset for me. He went, me, he went to the people. He told them, what the hell? He sent them an email. And then he took my number. And he said, you and I are going to remain in contact. I don't know And I remember, um, I was like, okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> and he took my number. And, um, and I remained in contact him in like sporadical time. So every three months, I would hear from him. And we'd do a Zoom call. And it was like kind of like a, a therapist appointment. He said, he's like, what are you doing? And how are you been? And how are you advocating for you? How can I help you? How can I help you? It's all you say to me. And I say, I, I don't know just yet. I'm just kind of figuring out what I'm doing with my life. And this is around the time where Ramadan, I was making dua for direction. Mm. And I kept saying, I don't know where I'm going. And he was like, don't worry, you'll figure it out. And he always made contact. Anyways, he got married. You know, we, we, he kept, I never met a guy who continues to keep in contact with me. Never. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't know. Like, I thought it was like, is this, this different? But he sincerely just wanted to help me. And when I started working on TDS and Vicek came out, like we were working on the doc of Vicek, the questions, he called me, he emailed me, said, let's do a Zoom call. And I told him about TDS and the team and how I'm trying to create a card game. And he was like, wow, a lot of things have changed for you. I said, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the money part. And then he says to me, I remember he like wrinkled. I remember seeing his, he's like, he looked up and he looked at me. He's like, I'll give you the money. I said, what? I'll give you the money. Don't, don't worry, I'll give you. I said, no, I can't take your money. Whoa, I can't take your money. He's like, why not? I said, because I don't want to, I feel like I'm, he's like, you feel like you're taking what, advantage? No, I'm giving you money. And I said, I know, but I just feel uncomfortable. He's like, why people don't feel uncomfortable? Why do you feel uncomfortable? Ooh. And I said, he's like, because you're conditioned to feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you to be like them and take the money exactly. and do something with it. And I was like, I'm still uncomfortable. I said, okay, th- he's like, just take it. And he just didn't ask me any questions. And he said, take my money. <laughs> and, I, and I took his money and I was so scared. It's like holding on to money. You're like, oh my God, I'm not supposed to have this. Mm. And I remember I, I gave it to Hannah. I said, here's the money for my, she's like, how'd you get it? Mm-hmm. I said, this guy named Omar Khan, he's been keeping in contact with me for the last year and he believes in this. And he gave me the money. And he's the reason why Vicek had sold out today mm-hmm. on our pre-sale because he gave me a small, he gave me an amount and it, and, and it grew like a seed. And I know he's probably listening right now and I haven't been able to tell him because I haven't spoken to him in like a long time. Mm. And he sent me an email today. Oh, today of all days. Yeah, he wow. said, and, and I feel like I should read it. Yeah. Even though, like, it's, it's a regular, like, email. He just said, the, the subject says, how, how it go, how goes. And it goes, hey, Kadar, hey, Adar, how are you doing? Like, he's saying all that. And then he goes, I just want to let you know that I had a baby. Oh. Seen attached photos. So he said a picture of me of his daughter. Oh. And he says to me, I hope you're well. Um, like, like, don't be a stranger. Like, be, like here. And I'm like, I really believe a lot. Like, I feel like that email was sent today so I could talk about him here. Because yeah. I had forgot. 
you know mm -hmm. I didn't I, he didn't even dawn on me that he was such a part of how we grew like mm -hmm. he gave me money those people are so vital mm -hmm. you know just as the people that like bought uh, our merch and who are our Patreon members um, but he's the one who said I had a small idea and no proof that it would succeed mm -hmm. no proof not I had never even had a portfolio that said oh I, I, I dabbled in projects I could do a thing I had nothing all he had was my word and my passion and he, that was enough for him I honestly don't think even if it, it if it didn't come out I don't think he would have cared because I think for him what was important was was I was a black Muslim woman that was doing something that she believed in and he wanted to support that I just, if Omar, if you're listening, shout out to you, bro. You know what I, what I realized just as you're talking? Yeah. SubhanAllah. Um, this is the digital sisterhood. And the sisters are the, they spread it to each other in stories of sisters, right? But I feel like the biggest financial contributions were made by brothers. Is that true? Like, <laughs> like that's, I, I was just like amazed. Like the <laughs> biggest financial contributions that made digital sisterhood happen were made by brothers because they truly believed in it and like that because you always tell me these stories yeah. and i'm like wow it, that's so it's I funny just, it just yeah. clicked to me it, 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 you're absolutely right and the funny thing is is because after vache came out and we were finished and we had like come up with uh, tim had come up with the cover like the box design we needed like we were able to go into print and get samples mm. um but we needed to fundraise like um tds's episodes mm. and a little bit of for the card game and so what we do we did a fundraiser during ramadan do you remember yeah. and it was originally muna's idea do you remember <laughs> yeah. and you said let's just fundraise i said fundraise they don't even know us we did two episodes how are we fundraising we don't have any material to show people to say yeah these people need funding and i was like listen we're asking the muslims the muslims are rich They'll give to us, you know? They don't need, like, too much. And I was like, you would have thought I had learned from Omar Khan. Mm. You would have thought I learned. Yeah, mm. I still was doubtful, yeah. you know? And, and I remember, like, we came up with a description, you know? Shout out to Chanel. She helped us with setting it up. Um, and uh, we did it in the last 10 nights. And at that point, we had just finished Hilal's second part yeah. that went viral. Like, I saw brothers sending me videos and them watching it, listening to it, all over the world. And Muna and I and so were all looking at each other like, what is going on? Yeah, How Twitter was, so was like, and that's all what? <laughs> Rabbil Alami was trending. But <laughs> was like, was going around. And yeah. It was crazy. Because we never expected it, right? Yeah. But that noise was enough to help us start a fund. Because that, that, those two episodes ended up being our portfolio. Like, that was enough yeah. for people to know. And then we did the fundraiser, and I remember we were debating about how much the fundraiser should be. Some said, I said five. Mm. Okay? And then everyone was like, 10's good. Then what is like 20? That's it when you're out of your mind. There's a WhatsApp group chat, by the way. Yeah. We have <laughs> <laughs> we have Dr. Umar memes Do talking about, like, um, saying, you crazy. <laughs> Muna, Muna had, like, she had just so much confidence that people were going to give us $20,000 in you know, the yeah, last 10 minutes. Yeah, actually. I have always like, I know that you <laughs> humble yourself so much that I've always like, just for fun. Like, I, I was like, whatever number she's going to say, I'm going to double or like triple it. You're <laughs> like, crazy. You know, not that I actually like knew people yeah. were going to come, you know, but I was like, yeah, let me, just put, let me push her up. Like, just to, because so what, Sophia joined on your bag wagon. Was, was like, maybe, yeah. I was, I was like, just do it, Come no, on. Who cares? Last 10 nights. Somehow. Let's get it in. Yeah. That, and that's <laughs> the biggest yeah. It's the last 10 nights. Like, yeah. let's just ask. We made it $10,000. Mm. I remember the first 5000 we made it, but I didn't think we were going to make the next five. Mm. And then one night, Bismillah, I think it was the 27th or the 26th night, yeah. somebody dropped $5,000, the last remaining of the fundraiser. Yeah. And it was at Fajr. I woke up and my, my eyes, like, I think it was Sarah first. Somebody goes, Adar. She sent me a message, she goes, it's funded. I said, excuse me? I said, are you, are you asleep? Are you talking to me sleep talking? I'm not asleep. Look at the message. I look at it, fully funded $10,000. I woke up like a mummy. I said, what is going on? The first thing I told um, uh, Sarah was, who dropped 5K? I have to know who. I was like, Sarah's like, I don't even know how to figure that out. I said, who, dro who dropped 5K? With, that's, they, they, it's almost like someone was watching, you know, and then wanted to finish it. They said, okay, whatever it was, we're going to finish it. And we ended up finding I was a brother. Mm. And I was a brother I never expected it from. Yeah. And I was shooketh.
<laughs> and I said, what is going on? And, and by the way, like a lot of brothers uh, uh, like donated um, uh, throughout the 5K, but that brother finished it. He's, mm-hmm. And there were brothers, remember, who were saying, well, double it. There was even a brother from Twitter who DM'd me. He said, sister, if uh, five people donate to you, I'll double the five. Yeah. Some brother, random brother. I said, Allahu Akbar, whatever you say. And then it's just, it was all these brothers pushing and pushing. And I didn't even know for what reason they decided to champion this fundraiser. Mm. And then 5K, here we are. And then now we're all looking at each other like, okay, double it. Double it. Yeah, and that's, that's when we went crazy. That's what <laughs> Push it up. <laughs> this is what this is recipe was like. Was like I told you, sir. <laughs> this was easy. I'm sitting there like easy. I was shook, You know yeah, what I'm saying? Subhanallah. Yeah. And we made it before the ten nights had it even ended. Um, but it, I I knew it was kind of a monumental moment mm. for all of us um, because it hit. A, it kind of killed the glass ceiling for me personally because now I realize, wow, this is something's happening. Yeah. Something is going on. Like something abnormal like something like that's almost miraculous was going on Mm. because we had come together we were a team we were had all these dreams we're making it work and then here we are getting funded by strangers Mm. you know what i'm saying Uh, that didn't really know us from a hole in the wall um and i just i just knew something special was going on and i was telling him i was like i think something's going on i don't think we can stop like i think i think something i know what something's pushing us and i think allah's driving this so let's really like let's push you know and and that's what we did all summer. We pushed. We pushed a lot. You know, like Sim was doing cover arts after cover arts. Munda's producing episodes after episodes. But anyways, before we get into that, I know Sophia's sitting on my right. I want to ask Sophia. How did, how, just remind me, how hmm. did you join on this team? So um, for those of you who might not know, Adhan mentioned that the date of conception for TDS was August 11th. And that date's actually Adhan's birthday. Um, so... Other, in this moment of kind of um, realizing she had another year of life, she wanted to change something about her life. Um, she created that dream of TDS. I don't think other knows, but the day she came to me was actually the day right after my birthday. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, she didn't know. Um, so it was the day after my birthday, and um, other just randomly hits me up, and you guys can imagine, like, me and other at that point, we knew each other for a few years. But we were more like acquaintances. We would see each other around <laughs> university <laughs> campus, the masjid, et cetera. But um, I feel like because we we're always doing such different things, we never really had a chance to get to know each other Bond. very well. Yeah. Bond. And so it was just always like, I knew other had such good vibes. But it was like, okay, you know, I'm off. I'm doing my thing. Other's doing her thing. And uh, like those things hadn't had a chance or a moment to come together. Um and uh, it, it's funny because there's a lot of things like in the background that I think about me and other story and like the progression of TDS. Um, she mentioned also um, how in um, 2020 was the, kind of that Ramadan. She started making a lot of du'a for that change in her life. And I remember right before COVID, Adar was actually trying to produce a film. Mm-hmm. And that film was the first time Adar and me actually were going to work on a project together. So other catches me in the hallways of the masjid upstairs and like she grabs me. She says, Sophia, so what? And then she's like, oh, like there's this meeting in the boardroom. Do you want to come? I'm looking at her thinking like, you know, I'm, I'm in the masjid. I'm a volunteer though. Like what's going on? <laughs> right? <laughs> so she pulls me into the, the boardroom and we sit down and like we have a discussion, right? About like art, about the film that other wants to make. And it's really like still similar themes to TDS. So it's based on like community, the way that people are feeling and like reflecting that. And so she, in that moment, she really wanted to capture the experience of um, Somalis in Toronto. And that's what she was going with it. And I think in the, at that time, alhamdulillah, um, other's vision was really just the world she was living in. But it wasn't bigger than that. And I feel like that's also what made TDS really distinct and special because others' vision throughout that year of praying, making those da'as in Ramadan, changing her bedroom, you know, her vision changed for herself, right? It, it became more than just like, you know, her city, her friends, like the, the, the beautiful world she was living in, but the smaller world, right? And I feel like TDS really encouraged her and inspired her to look at the bigger world of like sisterhood and Muslims and black women and what does that mean and where does she fit and where do we all fit, right? And I think because that vision for herself got bigger, she needed that time. Allah needed to instill that in her heart. She needed those those moments of reflection in order to really do this. And I think it's beautiful that like I got to saw see um 
that change in the background for other. And I think that's a lot of the story of actually me and other <laughs> kind of like perfectly kind of defines it is that um, although TDS, like we are in our title, the digital sisterhood, right? I feel like the story that I've experienced alongside of other has really just been like how much, if we put something out into the world, how much can that change our lives in our real lives? And so me and other, that's kind of like the things we've been experiencing, like, the work that we do in TDS, how much does it change the pace of our day-to-day -day life? You know, what does it mean when we work on these projects in terms of the people we get to meet, the opportunities we get to have, the experiences we get to go through? And I think, you know, alhamdulillah, Adar, <laughs> Adar came to me on a random weekend after my birthday. And um, to be quite honest, I needed somebody. I needed somebody. And and, and, and that day, Adar knows um, we did not do a single piece of work. Like I had made du'a because I had this experience happen to me and I was really confused. Mm -hmm. And I said, I do not know what to do, right? Adar came to my house. She hit me up randomly. She's like, hey, can you just edit this document for me? She's like, Sophia, I think you write really well. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, that's nice of you. Because <laughs> she used to tweet, like, she's like, you know what, Sophia's a writer. She's, a she's writer. incredible. And, I, and, and before I came to you, I told the team, I'm going to an incredible writer to help yeah. us edit a doc of Vibe Check. And, I, and I've always wanted to poach her. Because remember, like, TDS, interesting part is these are, these are not a bunch of women that are my friends. These are a bunch of women I admired their talent. Right, I admired Muna's talent. I admired Sima's talent. I admired Hanan's talent. There's Hanan. She's an incredible entrepreneur and had experienced so many things. She lived in Saudi Arabia. She was. I, I see Hanan like my mentor. So imagine these are all singular people that I said we gonna make the craziest Power Ranger team. You know, and so I I went to her and I and I told you guys about it and we went there to, to edit the doc on Vicek, but we didn't work that night as uh, Sophia said. Yeah, and and like I have to, I have to go back. Speaking of writing, um, is that I've and my Twitter, I've actually written about other before, and I told her like it's the craziest thing that I can go back and read these things, right? Mm. Because, um, you know, I remember that March. I told you guys right before COVID, like other was going to work with me on this project, and. Uh, Everything shut down, and then she d was doing this fundraiser for uh, a woman in Somalia who needed to support and help. And I remember like, quote retweeting her, and I said, you know, other, I think you're a very special person. I'm actually reading this off my phone right now. You know, you have a genuinely kind spirit. Everyone who knows you knows that. I said, and may Allah reward you for being a caller to good and grant you an abundance of goodness. And it was weird because other at that time, she had never done anything on a public platform, but I really saw her as this caller to good. And, and that's why when she came to me, you know, at the masjid that day, I was like, okay, I'll work on whatever other wants to work on. Like other is that person who can do this, right? And I think sometimes, you know, you see people in life and they don't know where to put themselves, right? And so even though they're a really great person, it's, it's almost awkward, right? Because it's like you're trying to force yourself in a place that you don't fit. And I think in that moment when I saw other, I said, oh, wow, you're like, you're an amazing person and you're putting yourself in the place that you fit, right? And People, when they do that, they deserve support and they deserve help. And like for me, it was just like, okay, Adad, like if you're doing something and you're reaching out to people, right, and you're calling to something good, of course I'm going to help you because you know how to do this. This is what you're built for. This is what Allah created you to do, right? And then so, uh, sorry, Adad, I don't I'm mean sorry, to I'm, cry. I'm, I'm crying. I'm just <laughs> crying in the back. Only because um, I think uh, <laughs> there's something that you uh, said to me once Um where actually you didn't say this, you tweeted it because Sophia tweets all of her deep stuff. It's my diary, guys. It's, it's really her diary. <laughs> and then if anybody's wondering, um, just at TDS and I'll show you her Twitter account. It's oh incredible. My god. Oh my god! No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> she she writes these really really uh, thought provoking things, and she wrote something that really resonated with me, where you said, "People only want to be seen as good mm. for the good that they want to be," and and, and she said that's the big, that's the kindest thing you could do for someone, and um. I'm crying because, you know, hearing her say that about me is very kind. And I think sometimes as people, we struggle to see ourselves as good, mm -hmm. even though we truly desire to be good, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes um, we, we fall short and sometimes our shortcomings feel so enormous that um, we give up on ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So all of these acts are, are these things I'm trying to prove myself that I am inherently good. 
you know because sometimes you can believe that you know maybe i'm not that great maybe i'm all evil you know and um and, and those are like the, the the sister that you're mentioning um that um we I, I helped fundraise on my social media on twitter was because i have a conversation i heard my mom of a woman that was on speaker on her phone begging for money and I was in my room, and and at the time my room wasn't decorated, right? I had a, a single bed, room and jail. I looked like I lived a, <laughs> like an inmate. <laughs> and um, yeah. and she was talking about how she had, you know, kidney issues, and she didn't have any children. She said, "I don't know what I'm gonna do," and I was like, "What the hell? Why does anybody feel that way?" You know? And so I asked her after my mom hung up the phone. I went to her, sat on my back, so I didn't know I was listening. I said, "Hoy, what can I do to help her? Like, how can I?" And Hoy goes, "Um." I mean, and I was working at the time, but I wasn't making much. I was a part-time because I was a student. I'll give her my the paycheck I had. And she's like, you know, that's good. She needs more than that. I said, then I'm going to ask my friends, you know, and I'm going to ask the public because the public, we all have a moral responsibility to take care of each other. When we see someone in need, we're supposed to hasten. So I was like, I'm going to figure it out. I don't know how, <laughs> um, but I said, if I pursue it, Allah will open the door because that's his, that's his believer, you know? I'm just trying to help. I can only do, but this is Allah. We be- she belongs to Allah. And so if he wants it for her, he'll give it to her. You know, that's not my job. I'll just figure it out, you know? And so I made a massive WhatsApp chat. All my Duxie friends, all my, even people I didn't know. I said, yo, if you knew me, like I was like, this is somebody who really needs money, fam can you give and, I, and they all started sending me money even the, the Gucci alone made a thousand dollars or 600 something and that was a lot i was like yes right and then um a friend i think i don't know which friend it was me a lot reward it said her hey this is also a public responsibility post it on your story mm. so i wrote it and then i said hey whoever you know and i didn't have that many followers bro at the time um i said hey whoever wants to donate this somebody really needs i just explained the situation and um and i put my uh, my e-transfer I went to bed that night, and I woke up with $2,000 in my account. Mm, and I was shook. Yes. I said, oh, my God. Subhanallahu akbar. Allah, like, this is Allah taking care of her. And, t- I, and I felt like a witness of it. Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, she didn't know where her help was going to come from. And it came from a girl who sleeps like an inmate in her room, <laughs> eavesdropping from her mom. Exactly. Um, who was talking to her. And I reached out to them, and they gave to her, and I thought that was so miraculous. And then I remember if my parents, he'd seen my parents react when I told them. He just thought, I wish I recorded it. My dad was like, what? Two, you got $2,000? My mom was like, she just kept saying, Allahu Akbar. You know, because we didn't, she just the other night, she had nothing. And we don't know what we we're going to do. And now today, she has more than like enough, alhamdulillah. And uh, um, when she heard about it, I remember we called her together. It was Fedj at our time, but it was like early. It was like, it was a good time for Kenya. She started crying. She just couldn't believe it. $2,000. She started crying and crying and crying. And um, and she longed because I'll give her take and, and her ashab. And I said, oh, it's not my ashab. It's ashab on the digital added person. How do you explain it to somebody? You know, that the, the wider Muslim community did this, you know? Um, and she was just kept crying and just saying thank you. And I tweeted about it, you know. And Sophia had seen it because she was following me then. Um, and after that, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to provide relief however I can provide it because it feels right to do that. It mm-hmm. feels great. It, I don't want to do anything else but this, you know. But I didn't know what that looked like. And so I, I really appreciate that because I think for me, I just wanted to be seen as good. So I appreciate you, Sophia, for uh, for being the epitome of kindness, honestly. Love you too, sis. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, they were all part of that story, you know, because I experienced that before TDS, just before. Um, and, uh, and you're right. And I will never forget, people were sending me messages, brothers saying, sister, this money is for the sister in Kenya. Like, the in Kenya. like people were very intentional about her and I remember I was so scared I was like going to the to the, the, the money place I was like and I even added more money just in case like I had t- like taken maybe something I don't know I was very scared this money was in a manna yes. you know and I was like this manna needs to reach her and uh, and I was just grateful that Allah made me a means you know to carry the money even if it was just to carry money even to give me much but you know like I gave what I could and I just felt like oh, what is it what a, what a feeling to be part of Allah's mercy Truly, truly. You know? Do you guys, uh, um, can you guys recall a moment where you, you, you felt the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through TDS? I feel like 
there's so many I moments mean, being in here my life. Yeah. This week is, is really, <laughs> really strange. Say more. What do you mean when you say here? Um, here in Minnesota, um, cause, like, like we said, for me and 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 Adad, and I think for you guys too, right? There's a degree to which like TDS is this online digital platform. Like we do our work. But there, there's this way TDS has been like trickling into our real lives and actually impacting it and affecting it. And um, I, I've always like spoken to Ada and others always complaining to be clear <laughs> <laughs> about Sophia. Why are you always in the background, Sophia? Why don't you put yourself forward? And I always talk to her about like the theme of like patience with me. I said like be patient, Ada. Right? Like there, there are moments and times for people and I believe every experience has different layers to it. Mm. And I think like season one is kind of like thematic to like those layers of like you know gratitude and connection and empathy and sisterhood but I, I keep telling her and like she keeps like, thinking I'm crazy but I believe this and I, I know Allah will facilitate this I said to her season two things are gonna begin to change and you know when you have a lot of big changes you need a lot of patience and preparation so guys that's also why we're taking a hiatus to be fair <laughs> <laughs> it's a must mandatory hiatus. it's a must um because other other like she said she speaks in a language of dreams mm. she speaks in a language where um you know i see this and i see that and i want to do this and i want to do that you know and it's weird and it's crazy but it, it's beautiful that those dreams even though they're big they never seem far-fetched and i tell her like if this is going to happen, when this is going to happen, we need to be prepared and we need to like transform ourselves along the way. And I think like that's such an important thing to think about is that, you know, as we're doing good, we need to become better ourselves. Mm. And I always tell others like we need we need moments of pause. We need moments of reflection. We need moments where, um, you know, we're very grateful for what Allah has given us. And um, it's the reason why I even like accepted joining in TDS. I, I went to other one day. And I, after like, I think like the first month and then I got to see the podcast happen. And I said to her, I was like, what's your intention? And she's like, oh, you know, this is my idea. This is what I want to do. I said, no, no, that's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is like, what's your intention? Where did this come from? What, like, why are you doing this at its core? Right. Because I said, I want to be there for you. I want to support you, but I need to understand that. Right. In order to be here. And other spoke to me and she said, I made a promise. I said, okay. Okay, what do you make a promise for? And she's like, I made a pro. Uh, I'm sorry, other than I'm sorry. publicly releasing this because uh, nobody knows. But she's like, I made a promise to Allah, and I promised Allah that if Allah allowed this to be successful, that I would mention Him everywhere I went, and I would tell people this was only by Allah, and this was only through His mercy that we got here, and I would remind people everywhere I went about Allah, and I'd be a caller towards Allah. And it wouldn't be about me, right? Even though I, I would be there and I might be the face, it would be about Allah. And, and I said, I said, is that like the basis of what you're doing this by? And she's like, yeah. I said, then I can agree to this. Mm. Right? Yeah. And so I always, I always tell Adar that, you know, when it's about Allah, like it gets so overwhelming. Like this experience, like so many people, like I make jokes with her all week. I, I kept calling her Oprah. <laughs> so so and many you're calling Muna Gale. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, my friend DMs me that. But I was telling her, um, you know, sometimes when you have something really good, you can get distracted by it, right? And and you can get blinded by that thing. And that thing, you know, you might misunderstand that. Um, you might make that thing the important thing, and it might fill your vision. And I keep telling her, like, we need these moments of pause, these moments of reflection, these moments of patience, mm -hmm. so that our, our vision is that we're seeking Allah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And I said, if we keep that vision in mind, what's going to happen? We, can't, we can never predict. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think that's why, like, this moment, us sitting here in the studio in Minneapolis, from a podcast that we both, like, have so much respect and appreciation for. Shout out to Nomadic Hustle. Shout out mm -hmm. to Nomadic Hustle. Um, you know, it, it's strange. It's strange in in the way that we can we could have never thought about this, and even throughout throughout this journey of TDS, there there have been so many moments of almost like we almost made this deal with this company, we almost made this thing happen, we almost connected with this person, right? And a lot of those moments of almost never like it was beautiful in a dunya sense, but mm. it wasn't beautiful in a sense that we felt connected to Allah, yeah, right? And I okay. feel like. You know, I mentioned uh, at the conference this weekend, the, the fact that Masjid Abu Bakr brought us, right? The fact that this Masjid is very well known for 
producing hafad, right? Being excellent mm. in the Quran really means something to us, right? Like the fact that the first, you know, community to ever reach out and say, hey, come to us and, and, and speak about sisterhood was them really, really means something to us. And I, I feel like, you know, hopefully, inshallah, it's a sign that Allah is accepting what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and and we always speak about like there's so many things we want to do and there's so many ideas out there in the world that that seem very attractive and like glittery. But we keep trying to like pause, pull ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's really been my role is like other pause, other let's think this through. Other what are we doing? Like, how are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Right. And I keep telling and she keeps saying, like, Sophia, like, throw yourself forward, do this, do that. I keep telling her. <laughs> There's a method to my madness, okay? <laughs> Believe me, there, there is, there is yeah. a method because yeah. every team has has players who know their role, and I feel like that's that's what ma- has made TDS so beautiful. That everybody knows how to play their mm-hmm. role beautifully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I told other that 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 first weekend that she came, and she said, "Oh, Sophia, you know, I want you to be a writer. I want you to do this for the blog, etc." I told her, "My writing is going to have its moment. Don't worry, inshallah." But I said, "This moment, like, you know, I, I looked at her and I said, other you need like an executive assistant, yes. right?" And <laughs> she totally yeah, like, she totally rejected it. Yeah. And I, saying, I didn't see you. I didn't see that vision for you. Right. And I kept saying her to her, like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, it's fine. Right. I see it for myself. And I, I, I wanted uh, to actually tell other this. I don't know if I mentioned it to you yet. But um, years ago, prior to TDS, um, I actually ran a campaign with others, Apti. And that was like a great experience. And one of the mm. things we talked about at the end of the campaign, he's like, well, Sophia, you know, like, what's what's some other like big project you want to do with your life? Right. And I, I just like offhandedly mentioned to him. Oh, you know, I kind of want to help a startup start up. Right. Wow. And then, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I, I forgot. Mm-hmm. I forgot. He actually told me. He reminded me. He's like, did you remember that you said this to me? Right. Mm. And he's like, and I think it's crazy. Like, it's like you're doing it for my niece. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. And I think it's such a small world. That is crazy. Uh, yeah. And I just said, like, you know, uh, like I had a chance to do a campaign, but that's kind of short term. Like, I want to help something like create something bigger, right? And I always talk to other, a lot, of, a lot of the times about the business side of TDS. So TDS is the platform, but TDS is also a business and we want to be big business, inshallah. Yeah. inshallah. And a lot of people don't know that, by the way, that TDS is not more than, it's more than a, a podcast, actually. Mm-hmm. It's actually a incorporated company, which is kind of bizarre because it's, uh, being an incorporated company with no money <laughs> sounds <laughs> wild because the money is, if you don't have anything, it's to be a, non, it's to be a nonprofit. But I remember CV said to me, why are we limiting ourselves yeah. money-wise? Yeah. And why do we have to prove ourselves to these people that we earn, we need that? Yeah. You know, especially running a faith-based, you know? She's like, we have to have yaqeen that whatever we want to do and need is going to be provided for us because we're not servants to people, we're servants to Allah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and one other thing, me and other had a conversation one time kind of about the money side and how we're going to keep TDS running in the long term. And she had a discussion. She said, Sophia, you know, I feel irresponsible. I feel like I've just graduated university. Um, I should be looking for a job, right? The fact that I'm not working a job, I'm investing into the startup, you know, like, um, <laughs> what am I doing with myself, right? And I, I had to sit down with her and I said, okay, like, other, let's, like, you think you're doing something wrong, but let's do the math, right? And I asked her some questions. I said, like, other, like, before, right? I said, you can't look at some imagined idea. You have to look at what your circumstances were and what your circumstances are. I said, before, I said, when you're working at Ikea and you hated your life and you were crying, I said, like, how much money did you make that year? And she said, oh, Sophia, you know, I made X. I said, okay, cool. I said, how much money has TDS made this year? Mm. And then she said, oh. And I said, okay, so... You're now, you change jobs, essentially. Yeah. You're working in a company, you're working in an organization, right? And the same amount of time, the same amount of effort, the same amount of energy, mm-hmm. guess what? At that time, I said, you just made the same amount of money. And I kept telling you, by the end of the year, you're going to make more than what you made, right? And inshallah, I really think we're actually on track yeah. for that completely. Right. And I said, like, and I said, don't be surprised. Like the next year after that, like the more energy and the investment and time and, and the clearer your vision gets. I said, Allah will give you more. True. I said, don't be don't be confused because other says, like, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do this? I said, we're going to do it. All we need to do is tie our horse, sit down, think, plan, then run. 
like have to talk along the just run just do it mm-hmm. right like, like don't complicate it but i told her sometimes i said you know you can't always be running sometimes tie your horse feed your horse pet your horse make sure the horse feels loved <laughs> oh, true, right true. in the process because uh, yeah. we we have to pace ourselves right in order to be successful in order to be sustainable and it, it, that needs to happen mm-hmm. and so i told her i was uh, speaking to other and also now speaking on this mic um I was just saying, like, there are levels and there are layers, right? And as we want TDS to grow and change and become something that we're really envisioning, it's more than the podcast. It's more than being, like, the greatest, like, media production studio for Muslims worldwide. Yeah, b- produced getting- by Beautiful Light Studios. Ooh. Ooh. You know? Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's more than, you know, um, being, like, the greatest, like, Muslim art production symbol. Yeah. yeah. Graphic design. We're going to get there. so, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's bigger than that. And yeah. I'm, what, I, what I've seen right through the podcast through our guests through their team right as our lives keep changing and they keep mm-hmm. iterating and we keep saying to ourselves the more that we say a good word that mm-hmm. we believe in Allah that we, we trust in him and we, uh, we keep put, putting that out into the wor- world the more we see things in our lives change and I keep telling other like don't worry about me because I, I, I am, I'm really comfortable where I am at not because like I don't want things to change because I know Allah has a time for everything and I said I'm preparing for that moment, right? And sometimes preparation needs patience. Mm. And that's what I really learned in my personal life this year. (laughs) Preparation needs a lot of patience because sometimes you need to be a better person. You need to purify yourself to really be able to accept what Allah is giving you with grace, Mm. right? To really have a sense of gratitude Mm. so that Allah can increase you in what he's giving to you. And I, I believe like TDS will become something so much better than what we did this year. And it's just like Mona said, like this was our trash year. And if this was our trash year, then alhamdulillah, like how did our trash year end up like this? Yes. Yeah. Right? How yeah. did our trash year end up with like, you know, our intentions were, you know, yeah. we fought with them, they went all over the place, you know, we 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 failed, we tried, we did, we did this, you know, we're a small group of people, but we wanna go bigger, we wanna go larger, we wanna go grander, inshallah. Yeah. inshallah. Right? And so like the hiatus is is for us to come back and 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 touch your lives in ways that are so much more meaningful, inshallah. Yeah. And and to really get at the root of everything we heard in all our episodes and meeting all the sisters in Minneapolis, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. That is, Oh. Minnesota showed up. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, I think also a, another thing that's beautiful about the the, just, the digital sisterhood is if you have good intentions, good happens. Like it's a Truly. good example of having good intentions and having good outcomes. And I think that's what that's khadr Allah that I saw in the, in in here, yeah. like with everybody, because we all had our own duas. Yeah, and it came into it literally brought us together yeah. to our own own thing yeah. and that's so beautiful to see that yeah and I, I just wanted to mention um one more thing is that i as you guys know i uh, like writing things but you're one of my favorite thinkers yeah yeah, yeah. She I, is an incredible writer. thinker and i'm looking She's at like, something yes. i wrote to other once and yeah. this was uh, back in 2020 and i said um i had graduated that year and other just said you know may allah bless you in all your endeavors and i responded back to her and i said you know i said just so you know we're rooting for you two other and I know that post graduation, you're gonna do incredible things that will touch people's lives. Like verbatim, I wrote that. Oh, I said, "May Allah make you successful and great, sis." And I believe Allah is gonna answer that to come. Yeah. You know that moment answer. where, like, Alan was also stressed about, like, you know, her life. And she just- Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Since this episode is a very long episode, we've made the decision to cut it up into parts. And luckily for you, it's gonna be a three-parter. There's so many conversations, so many stories are coming about the challenges that we had, the moments that transformed our lives with the Digital Sisterhood and the actual team. We hope you enjoyed the past hour and a half and we'll see you next week. This episode was brought to you by Beautiful Light Studios. Our host is Adam Hamoud. We would like to give a special thanks to Nomadic Hustle, for providing his studio for us to record, and for the Rio team for making everything possible. In this episode, we were also joined by our graphic artist and designer, Wasima. We were also joined by Safia. She's a writer on the team, but she also does so much more. We would like to give a special thank you to all our live audience who showed up and who stayed with us through the three hours, almost four hours that it took to record this I am your producer, Munashah Omar, 
And as Adar would say, see you next week in your ear, in your speakers, telling you a good story. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.